No, I want to spend the last little time discussing what we can do with non-Newman boundary conditions, what's called the natural boundary condition. So natural boundary condition is quite interesting because it's something unique to finite element. We don't have this in finite volume or finite difference. It turns out, uh, what if I have a boundary condition that is du dx at 0 equal to 0? Okay, I still have u1 uh, equal to 0 being Dirichlet boundary condition. So, so I have Newman on the left and uh, uh, Dirichlet on the right. So that is, I'm looking for, for I'm looking for solutions like that. On the left has to be flat, and on the right it has to be equal to zero, right? I'm looking for this kind of solutions. So let's, let's use the Poisson's e uh, equation as an example. So how should I deal with this kind of boundary conditions? It turns out I don't need to do anything for this kind of boundary conditions. That's why it is called a natural boundary condition. What do I mean by I don't need to do anything? So to parameterize a function like this, I need to define my x u to be all the functions f within a, a Sobolev space and f1 is equal to 0. So I only need to enforce the right-hand side boundary condition. Okay, And uh, I'm going to define my x v to be the same as x u. So what happens is that when I derive the weak form, the weak form is going to be integration of a and b, v times the second order derivative of x plus a and b f times v is equal to 0. So when I perform integration by parts on the, on the first term, we no longer, because because we no longer have u or v to be equal to zero on the left side boundary. We have to start considering the boundary term at the left. It's no longer going to be the same as what we have before. So, so when we integrate by parts, we get v times the derivative of u uh, at, so, so when x equal to one, we get when, when x equal to 1, v is equal to 0. So this is gone. We only have this equal to 0. We have a minus sign here, minus the integration of partial v, partial x, partial u, partial x, dx, plus integration of f times v equal to 0. Right? OK. So here, this is what becomes very interesting. This has to be satisfied for any v whose value at the left boundary can be anything, right? And in order for me to satisfy this for any v, naturally, this becomes zero. So, so, so for the solution u to satisfy the weak form, For any v that doesn't have to be zero, which can be anything at x equal to zero, we have to have partial u partial x at zero to be zero. So the boundary condition of the derivative of u at the f boundary equal to zero comes naturally from the weak form. Okay, so that's why we call it a natural boundary condition. It naturally falls out of the weak form. Now, perhaps we have a question. What if I want to enforce a Newman boundary condition that is not exactly equal to zero? What if I want it to be one? How can I, how can I design it? Does it still come naturally out of the weak form? I 
I can still make it come out of the weak form by modifying one term. The term I need to modify is this. So what if I set this not to be zero, but if I remove the zero and add another term, that is v at zero, right? Remember, we just uh, discussed that uh, the bilinear form uh, has to be, well, sorry, the linear functional doesn't have to be the integral of a function times v. It can also be the value of v at a particular point, right? So, so in this case, what if I set the linear functional to be the summation of an integral with a known function and the value of v at a boundary? What turns out to be is that we are going to have a v of 0 here. Okay, and now v can be anything at 0, right? Because the weak form has to be satisfied for any v within xv, which can be anything at x equal to 0. So for this to be equal to this, the derivative of u at x has to be, in this case, minus, uh, minus 1. And of course, if I want uh, the derivative to be plus 1, I just set this to be negative v, and I have a negative v. If I want the derivative to be 0.5, then it's negative 0.5 of v. So by modifying just the, the weak form a little bit, particularly the, the right-hand side of the weak form, which is the linear functional a little bit, we can have the boundary condition naturally satisfied. Remember, this is very different from the Dirichlet boundary condition. The Dirichlet boundary condition, we actually modify the space of xu, and we also reduce the dimension of the space xv to satisfy the boundary condition. We actually force the solution u a priori to satisfy that boundary condition. Okay, any possible solution that is in the space has to satisfy the Dirichlet boundary condition. But for the Newman boundary condition, it's natural we only modify the weak form a little bit, and uh, it turns out the boundary condition is going to be naturally satisfied uh, once the weak form is satisfied. So, so these are two types of strategies for enforcing boundary conditions in finite element. Yes, uh, so, so I already got the weak form. This, there is no violation to the Poisson. I mean, this is this is assuming, so so I can derive the weak form from the Poisson's equation because if any equation satis if any solution satisfies the Poisson's equation, it also satisfies the weak form. It's just the other is not true, right? So if a, if I have a function that satisfies the weak form, it doesn't have to correspond to any particular Poisson's equation. I mean, if if you try to derive it, you get something that is not a function on the right hand side. So, so I went through this procedure to derive the weak form. It's just the, the boundary condition is going to fall out as an additional term on the right-hand side. You can still do the same derivation. You can still integrate by parts, and uh, uh, we are still going to get uh, the, the, the same form. It's just the, uh, the, if we have a non-zero boundary condition, then this boundary term becomes something non-trivial.